eating eggs will not have any impact on your cholesterol levels. Please allow me to explain. My name is Dr. Enin, doctorate pharmacist and a functional medicine doctor. And again, welcome to the channel. There's an ongoing debate and I'm getting questions upon questions as if X will raise your cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is a ring molecule that is very profound for our health. We need cholesterol for so many functions of the body. Our cells in the body is made up of cholesterol. Cholesterol is also responsible for us making hormones. It is what is making me look handsome here today because cholesterol is what is used to synthesize testosterone estrogen progesterone and even cortisol a stress hormone so cholesterol is actually vital to human survival without cholesterol we wouldn't be able to survive we also use cholesterol to make bile acid which is what is responsible for our digestion so cholesterol is actually vital for our health and we wouldn't be able to survive without cholesterol there are certain foods that may contain cholesterol like eggs eggs contain good amount of cholesterol like seafood contain good amount of cholesterol organ meats like the liver like the pancreas like the intestines these are all areas or food parts or animal parts that have good amount of cholesterol but this cholesterol that we eat does not make into circulation and the reason why is that the cholesterol we eat is esterified when we say esterified it means that it's huge it has a bulky side chain to it and for that reason it's unable to be absorbed in the gut in our stomach we have the endothelial layer of the stomach called the enterocytes it has two transporters one is called the neiman pick c1 like transporter and the other one is the atp binding cassette g5 g8 transporter now we will focus on the neiman pick transporter for the purposes of this discussion the neiman pick is what is responsible for taking cholesterol that we ingest into the bloodstream because of the bulkiness of the cholesterol that we ingest the neiman pick transporter is on able to take that it's physically impossible for the esterified cholesterol to get into circulation just let me digress here and just make this point the cholesterol that we ingest about 10 to 15 percent of it is de-esterified meaning that is the side chain is yanked off and it makes its way into circulation and that is 10 to 15 percent of what you ingest now of the 10 to 15 percent it is physiologically irrelevant because it doesn't impact our blood cholesterol levels the cholesterol that we eat has little to no impact on our lipid panel now let me also make this point here most people that have high cholesterol are insulin resistant and keep in mind the liver is also responsible for cholesterol synthesis now when the liver is congested when the liver has toxins and it's insulin resistant there's a lot of issues going on with the liver and for that reason that alone can affect your cholesterol levels so you have to also appreciate the fact that the liver with its numerous things going on with it can impact our cholesterol levels and not what we are ingesting the other thing to also note is that certain things can raise your cholesterol levels like specifically the LDA cholesterol like infections viruses bacteria fungal parasites those are all likely to raise your LDA levels when you have toxins, it can also raise your LDL levels. When we have endurance exercise or when you do endurance exercise, it can also have impact on our LDL levels. Even fasting, when we fast, it can increase our LDL levels. Does that make fasting bad? Absolutely not. And that is why we have to look at LDL as a part of a panel and not just in isolation because LDL being high does not really matter. Even though in mainstream medicine, your doctors may write statins for you when your LDL is high, but there are other factors that ought to be looked at. Genetics play a role as far as LDL levels are concerned, infections just like I mentioned, and a host of other things even losing weight can affect your LDL levels and is losing weight good for your body absolutely especially healthy weight loss and even in healthy weight loss you may see a rise in LDL level LDL may not be the problem and dietary cholesterol may not be the issue now the other question is does saturated fat cause a rise in LDL levels yes saturated fat is different from cholesterol and most people will make or pin this together as being the same and the Anytime I hear that, I just think it's just gross disregard for the biochemistry of saturated fat and cholesterol because cholesterol is a ring molecule. Saturated fat is just a long chain fatty acid and it's saturated with no double bonds. So that, that's just 
a chemical distinction between the two. Now, saturated fat, on the other hand, can raise LDL cholesterol. And it does so because when we ingest saturated fat, we can in fact raise our LDL levels. And what are some of the sources of saturated fat? Red meat, we find some in dairy, we find some in certain plant-based oils like the coconut oil, like palm kernel oil, and so forth and so on. So these are areas that we can see saturated fat. Yes, and it can potentially raise our LDL level because once we ingest saturated fat, it downregulates the LDA receptors in the liver. And for that reason, LDA rises in the blood. Does that make saturated fat bad? Absolutely not. And are saturated fat all equal? You have different types of saturated fat. You have the one with this long side chain and ones with short side chain. For example, if we take steric acid, which is a form of saturated fat that we will see in dark chocolate, it has no to little impact on our lipid levels and LDL for that matter. Now, coconut oil have a short side chain, which will have profound impact on your LDL levels. Does that make coconut oil bad? No. So we have to look at it from so many perspectives to appreciate the science and the biochemistry of these molecules. So saturated fats can in fact raise your LDL levels and not all saturated fat will do so. So coconut oil can potentially do that. Does that make coconut oil bad? No. Palm oil can do so. Does that make it potentially bad? No. So we have to understand and appreciate these biochemical differences and its impacts on our metabolic health. Now, let's digress and talk about the healthy fat, which is the unsaturated fat. So when you talk about unsaturated fat, we're talking about the olive oil. We're talking about the avocado oil. We're talking about the macadamia oil. Now, these oils, that's opposite what saturated fat does it has the ability to lower your LDL levels and it does so by activating an enzyme called cholesterol 7 alpha hydroxylase and this hydroxylase enzyme convert cholesterol into bile acid and we use that for our digestion so in conclusion what I want people to understand is that X and anything cholesterol rich does not impact our blood level cholesterol. However, saturated fat potentially can increase your LDL levels. On the other side, unsaturated fats like the macadamia oil, like the olive oil, like the avocado oil, will in fact decrease your LDL levels. If you have seen your doctor and you have high levels of LDL, maybe it's time to take breaks or put breaks on your saturated fat intake and what are some of the sources of saturated fat that would be the red meat it doesn't mean red meat is bad it just have good amount of saturated fat dairy you also want to put breaks on those and of course all the plant-based oils that may have good amount of saturated fat like the coconut oil like the palm kernel oil like the palm oils so these are some of the things you want to do when you LDL levels are high. You also want to cut down on junk foods, the ultra processed carbohydrate, the refined carbohydrate. Let's also be reminded that infections, toxins, fasting, endurance exercise can all have impact on your LDL levels. Maybe a holistic practitioner or a functional medicine doctor will be the one to help you figure out what is really driving your LDL levels especially when you have put breaks on your saturated fat intake. If you think this video has been helpful, please don't forget to like, don't forget to follow, don't forget to share, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe so we can keep this conversation going. Until the next video, we'll talk again. Thank you.